Hello, sisters and brothers, it's Janine here from the Harry Peace. We are having another interview with Louis Bruce, or Louis Bruce, whatever comes um, first in whatever language comes first. He is a photographer and filmmaker, and on his way, he found the Queros here in Peru. So we're here in Cusco, and we are going to talk about his journey and the journey he follows of other people. So stay tuned. <laughs> this is uh, not like talking to a camera by myself. No. It's weird having someone sitting next to me, but... Uh, <laughs> and asking questions. Yes, I haven't, I haven't been able to prepare for this like my YouTube videos. <laughs> You're never prepared for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, yeah, let's make it a nice baptism, please. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay, so... Welcome, Louis. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Very, very happy to be part of this. Yeah. It's great to meet you once more. Yep. And yep. we just go right into the interview. So my first question for all of the people is, when did you fall in love with Mother Nature? Oof. Wow. Um, I, I was very lucky um, when I was about three, we moved to South Africa. And my, my father um, bought a, a hotel slash farm in the, in the mountains, in the Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa. So from a very young age, I had uh, a, a very kind of uh, fortunate connection with, with nature and living in a very beautiful part of the world and spending afternoons up in the mountains with my brother. My mum my mom would uh, kick us out of the house and say, go and, go and play. And about three or four, four hours later, me and my brother would come back naked and covered in mud. <laughs> so um, I guess, yeah, and I, I went to schools that were always um, very much in, intertwined with nature. So I, it's been a big part of my life forever. I mean, until I went to Cape Town, I, that was the first time I had actually lived in a city. And even in Cape Town, you have, you have mountains kind of at the click of a finger. Did you feel that connection to Mother Nature consciously? It, I guess because, because I'd grown up in it, it was, something, it was something that I maybe took for granted to begin with. I just, I just felt like that was life, you know? And then, and then when I did move into a city and I did uh, kind of like going to London or, or Johannesburg or other big cities, only then did I realize, really realize like how, how disconnected from nature the vast majority of people are mm. um, and then when I saw that that's when I kind of really mindfully kind of understood how lucky I'd been to to always be in nature really and when you felt that other people are disconnected could you feel inside of yourself the connection and maybe some guidance hmm um, I I wouldn't say there was like a, a conscious connection per se, um, more, of an, uh, more of a conscious appreciation, more of a, a kind of like a really, like whenever I went on hikes with friends or we went up into the mountains and stuff, there was always those moments of like great appreciation and gratitude to be able to, to be able to just go and connect with nature and, and, and yeah be feel like you're the the only person in in that place um and there was that appreciation was kind of fortified when i when i saw that most people didn't have that connection but i don't think i ever looked at them and thought these people are disconnected mm. i never i never really looked at it that way mm. yeah and now you are here in peru following a path mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that but here people really try to live some of them really try to live connected with the mountains, mm -hmm. the elements. Mm -hmm. So truly connected with nature in a deep, deep level, mm -hmm. in a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. Which is not just the appre appreciation, it's like way more than that. Mm -hmm. How, what does it do with you? Why, why do you search for that? I think, I think that's, that's where 
Cusco and, and being in South America and exposed to the indigenous cultures has really had a profound influence on me because uh, although I grew up with uh, a huge amount of for fortune to, to spend so much time in nature, I never looked at it as, I was never conditioned to believe that that was our God, that that was our, our everything in a sense, like without Pachamama we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. So if you're, whether you're spiritual or not, um, by definition, this planet is our God, because without it, we don't exist. So I think coming into South America and seeing, I, I grew up with, with native communities in South Africa, but unfortunately, um, by the time I was growing up with them, they had lost that, uh, that, um, kind of profound connection to the land that they used to have. They had basic services and they had, uh, they were, kind of in, they were in, intertwined with the real world so I didn't ever see the kind of the rituals and the tributes and the ceremonies that the indigenous people here still practice in order to uh, kind of fortify that connection with with Pachamama um, yeah it's been uh, it's it's really opened my eyes to a whole new level of, of connecting to nature before it was just an appreciation now I really want to be of service and and connect as deeply as possible with with Pachamama and, and and this planet. How did all the journey look like then, from appreciation to that desire to now connect hmm. deeply? I've I always so I being a photographer, like landscape photography was my first passion. So I've always had like a a deep love for the beauty of nature, um, and then I decided to go to South America to teach English um, and learn Spanish and I ended up in Chile uh, where that desire and wish came from I we don't know um, but yeah I, it it first started when my mum my mum asked me a question she asked me how I'm doing spiritually and now she she's always been spiritually inclined um, and my response to that question was that it's not important to me right now um, but it, it flicked a switch in me. It, uh, it made me want to learn more and I kind of studied a bit about the different walks of faith and religions and stuff and that brought me into the, the shamans, although they, most of them don't like to be called shamans, but the shamans of South America, Latin America, and particularly the Amazon. And then two weeks after I'd learned about that or started learning about that, I went up to the Andes with a friend of mine who was, who was ill he was, he was in La Paz and he got altitude sickness, so he had to come down to Santiago. So he came to visit me and I said, uh, let's go back up into the mountains. <laughs> Someone who just had altitude sickness. <laughs> but he, uh, he decided that was a good idea. So we went back up into the Andes and uh, spent a long time looking for a place to stay. And we eventually found a homestay and at a homestay was a, a shaman from Nacion Quero where we were last week. Um, and my Spanish wasn't very good, but we did a uh, despacho ceremony. The first, this was my first real taste of like their, uh, uh, their kind of appreciation for, for Pachamama. And, uh, it was, I went to a Christian school and stuff and I had the whole dogma of Christianity fed down my neck and it never really hit home with me. It was kind of just over my head. And sitting around having this guy explain what all the different uh, tributes mean and, and how it's all focused on on tribute to Pachamama, Madre Tierra, Mother Earth. And I, it was the first time I actually felt like I was in church. First time I actually felt like a, a, something spiritual was inside me. And that was the second flick? Pardon? That was the second flick after the question. Yeah, exactly. So that was, that was, yeah, that was another, another exactly and uh, I couldn't my Spanish wasn't very good at the time but we managed to communicate a little bit uh, me and, between me and the shaman and before he left he said I must come to the community up in up in uh, the Andes mountains near Cusco and I thought well I wanted to teach English in the sacred valley so I thought well that's uh, something I could possibly do anyway um he did leave like quite a profound mark on me. He was his presence and his aura. It was uh, quite something. And uh, 
two months after that, I decided uh, to go traveling in Bolivia. And on my way back from, from uh, Bolivia, I had to fly from La Paz to uh, Lima, Lima to Santiago. And I checked my tickets on the day and they'd given me an hour to change over my, my flight. Um, which for an international flight, an hour, the check-in closes an hour and 15 minutes beforehand. And then I got to La Paz and my flight was now saying it was laying over in Cusco too. So I missed my flight from Lima by about four or five hours. Um, and it was my birthday the next day. So I asked my mom and I was like, mom, can you please uh, buy me a, a flight back to Chile just for my birthday? That would be really great. She said, sure, if you can find a cheap one. So I, I left Lima Airport illegally. I hope that doesn't come back. To buy it now, <laughs> saying that. <laughs> um, just cut it. <laughs> yeah, let's cut that. Um, but I, yeah, I managed to find a cheap flight, and at one, it was at one o'clock in the morning, and I went to the check-in, and there was an indigenous family there, the father, the mother, and their their child. I could tell by the clothes they were wearing, and the father came up and started chatting to me, and I asked what he was doing. He's like, I'm a shaman from Cusco, and I thought. That's interesting. I, I met a shaman from Cusco a couple of months ago. He's like, what was his name? So I showed him the picture I took of him and said his name was Marcelino. And he said that that's my brother-in-law. So, um, yeah, like two yeah, kind of shamans, Pampa Misaox, as they're traditionally called from Comunidad Kiko, which is made up of about 200 people. Um, it really kind of slapped me in the face about my whole kind of I was learning about spirituality, but to see that kind of synchronicity manifest itself in my own life was was a real kind of wake up call. And and uh, my Spanish had improved much better by then. So I chatted to his son Miguel for for the whole trip and like their culture and their connection to nature and and uh, their profound spiritual practices just intrigued me. And and I always wanted to go into conservation, but their culture and the way they lived was the answer to uh, to the way we we live with with uh, with our environment. So I was like, I need to. They said I must come to the community, and by now I was like, I'm hundred percent coming. Mm. Um, but I needed something to offer them in return, and uh, I'm a filmmaker and a photographer. So I asked if I could make a documentary on their kind of community, their way of life, and their their traditions, and they they said yes. So that's, that's why I'm here. I think a, a little bit more than that, I'm here to learn from them and I'm here to kind of embody their uh, way of living myself um, and then to share their message and, and uh, their way of living with as many people as possible. Um, for those that are not brief by now, we went to Nacion Quero mm -hmm. for five you for six days yeah. and we saw different communities in Nacion Quero and we haven't seen one one maestro, one shaman. Mm -mm, not up there, no. Um, the conquistadors tried to um, kill all the shamans in this area here, so all descendants from the Incas or the Inca shamans and now we see the pollution, we see that the Western world introduced um, itself. Papa Siva even said when he was a child mm -hmm. and when the white man arrived, um, his elders said that everything is going to change. Mm -hmm. So now we see that there is this change and I as well was very um, disappointed somehow and, mm -hmm. and sad to see that all the little plastic bottles and so mm -hmm. on were just lying around and I was questioning myself if you have such a deep connection, especially when you have a maestro with you that mm -hmm. makes that bridge between the spiritual world and this three-dimensional world, mm -hmm. what what just happens that people get more attracted by shiny, hollow stuff than, than the connection, the deep connection, the mm -hmm. so fulfilling, the spiritual connection? Mm. Um, I, I can't give myself an answer. I, I think I have a perspective on that. It's, it's taken our society a long time for our generation to come about and realize that this is not, this is not all it is. To, this is not all that means to be, it, it means to be human. 
I mean, like you look at our parents or maybe our grandparents and stuff, they're very much just like, this is Western society, this is the way we do things. And now our generation is looking up at our parents and not seeing that, that kind of the happiness and the fulfillment that one should have by having all this material wealth that like we've been told is, is the goal in life in, in many ways. And now we're finally waking up to that. And our challenge is now to preserve these kind of these indigenous traditions and ancient cultures and kind of bring them back into our society and share them around like many people are doing. I've seen in Peru, in Cusco, it's crazy how many, how many Westerners are here in, in not in search, but, but trying to find that spiritual growth and that spiritual and that fulfillment that is a far, in a far more of a deep level than, than what you have in front of you in terms of material possessions. Um, and unfortunately, these, these cultures haven't been through what we've been through to realize that it's not all that it's made out to be. So they're coming in and they're not, they're kind of wild by it because it's all new to them. And our challenge is to, is to preserve and, and embody their way of living before they get sucked into it. So we're in like a, we're in like a very, we're almost at a tipping point where it's like we, we preserve this and embody it and bring it back into our society or these people come into our society and we lose it all. Mm. Um, the social media structures mm -hmm. and so on. So the social media structures that are helpful for many indigenous cultures, like, um, like, like the Hawaiian people that are now fighting for their land, like mm -hmm. the New Zealand, the Maori people. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Kogis and the Kogis um, invited someone from the BBC mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was without without internet connection 20 years ago also. Yeah. And then they invited the same um, journalist again. Mm -hmm. And now everyone can see Aluna. Yeah. Aluna, exactly, yeah. through YouTube, mm -hmm. so which is your part as well. So you're part of that voice of the girls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, as, as we're talking about it, it it's, it's all about because I come from the Western world and the Kero have their indigenous perspective and I don't agree with a lot the Western world stands for and I agree with a lot that the, the Kero people stand for. So for me it's about being that middle man where I can try my best to take a message that is makes sense in their terms and try and translate it into like a Western mm -hmm. perspective maybe in order to try and yeah try and help people from the West wake up and, and see what, what might be missing in their lives. Um, in a spiritual way. In a spiritual way, yeah. So how is your spirit nowadays? Yeah, so, yeah, my, my spirit, it's, it's come a long way. I'm still quite young in this, in this spiritual journey. I think, uh, I've been, I've been quite lucky to, uh, have, been brought up and I mean, no one can avoid suffering. Um, there's that it will, it will come and well, it doesn't have to be suffering. If you're enlightened, it's just pain. And, and if you're, and, uh, if you're going to get swept away by the pain, then it becomes suffering. And, and I had my kind of bouts of suffering when I was quite a lot younger. Um, but it was never anything that was going to kind of dis kind of, destabilize my the rest of my life i've uh, had wonderful support networks throughout my life where uh, i can now look back on my past and and the problems that existed while i was growing up and and understand exactly why it happened and and come to terms with it so i'm yeah i'm i'm there's still so much healing for me to do but i especially feel like here in cusco there's a there's an environment that really kind of helps people understand what what might be kind of their their uh, the reasons for their unhappiness or their depression or something like that and 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 offer them structures and and methods to help alleviate that pain that they still feel in this present moment mm. um what what means healing for you he healing for me is so as uh, um as we were talking about my 
for, for, for me, if you believe in reincarnation, heat like suffering can can come with your spirit from past lives. If you don't believe in that, it can be passed down from from generation to generation by your ancestors. So there can be a kind of a genetic healing that needs to happen. Like if you look at our our fathers and grandfathers, they they often were brought being uh, brought up in a world that was in war and and terrible bouts of terror. Like we've only in the last kind of hundred years or so, we've had two world wars that has brought brought a huge amount of pain and suffering to many people. And that that doesn't just kind of die with that generation, even if it's not passed through your genetics, the parents who are raising their children are dealing with their suffering and that suffering can often be kind of put on to their children and then that generation's got to deal with that suffering and it goes on on and on. So I think our our generation is really waking up to um, the answer to healing and spirituality. Um, so healing for me is, is recognizing what is causing, being able to understand what is causing your pain and unhappiness in this present moment. Um, whether it's future kind of future things you've got to do or past grievances you experienced. Uh, there's a lot that can make you feel unhappy in this present moment. So it's about understanding where that unhappiness comes from, where it's rooted and then addressing that. Um, and through spiritual spirituality, you're provided with a number of ways of, of releasing that, that trauma and coming to terms with it. So for me, that's, that's healing. Um, and yeah, I'm still very much young, very young on this, on this journey. Um, but, uh, it's, it's, it's the only way to, to make this world a better place is your own personal healing. And if we do that on a collective level, then then uh then we can create a, a far more beautiful world that's that is filled with more love and and peace as mm. corny as it sounds that's the fucking truth <laughs> <And less laughs> sorry suffering. for swearing we can put that, <laughs> that beep in there <laughs> and less suffering yeah and you read that in many philosophies so mm -hmm. combining it now or making the circle round so what is healing in connection with Pachamama or what is mm -hmm. the importance of Pachamama in healing? I, th I think, so as Papa Siwa said in, in one, of, one of his things he said to me, he said uh, that they, up in Nacion Quero, they were born in a cave of hay and they were born into Pachamama and he says that his mum gave him his light but Pachamama gives him his life. And I, and I really think that there is this, now this is going into a bit more kind of, uh, out there topics, but there is energy and there is, there are spirits that are found in nature that can be incredibly healing if one can connect with them and one can really kind of, um, be present in nature and in, in all its beauty and all its pureness. Cause that's, that essentially is creation in its pureness. Um, you go into a city and stuff, there's a lot of human creation. It's not, and it's far from pure. Um, so, I th and I think revitalizing that, that connection with nature and Pachamama is so powerful in a, in a healing sense. Cause it's essentially what we are. We aren't separate from, from Pachamama, like all these cells and organisms that are on me come from this earth. So scientifically, spiritually, everything, we are all connected to this greater universe, this greater uh, being that is Pachamama. So I think, I think by revitalizing that connection and, and going back to Pachamama in a sense is like going back to your own source and your very core essence. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can with healing, get back to that core essence, which is your, your pure being. I, I like to talk about, um, which is kind of the pureness of Pachamama and the pureness of this, this, uh, this universe, unity consciousness, if you want to call it, then once you get there, you're healed and you are, pure and you are enlightened whatever you want to call it yes. you're there you're there connect yeah you are connected exactly so that's it's it's connecting with the essence beautiful yeah i yeah. think
I yeah. think. I hope that came across. I hope you understood. <laughs> yeah. That was a big j word salad for me. <laughs> <laughs> salad is always good. <laughs> yeah. Yep, from oh. Pachamama. <laughs> yeah. So that was so beautiful. <laughs> and I yeah. hope many people get the message and will follow you. Oh. <laughs> it's our plumbing system. Put that in the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give that a second. Yeah. <laughs> that should be that. <laughs> should be that? Good, good. Good. That was said beautiful and I hope many people get the message and they will follow you on the journey. Because I think it's beautiful to share the journey, not just the, the end of the journey, to share the entire journey and what you what you meet, what you see and mm -hmm. um, who you meet, who you see and yeah, what you experience at all. I mm -hmm. think that's very inspiring for people that still don't know where to go and what mm -hmm. to do and what to find, what mm -hmm. to search for actually, right? Yeah. So I cross my fingers that uh, you reach more people than you expect to reach yeah. and that we create a co-creative way that we are all on the peaceful wave and that we get that message and that we create a new new world with that. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for for your work. Munaicha. Thank Munaicha. you very much. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been an honor and thank you very much for having me on this wonderful uh, initiative of your own. Um, it's uh, we need more people doing things that like you. Um, and yeah, yeah. I hope I hope my journey and 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 sharing sharing it um, with this thing called social media can 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 have an impact on people in some yeah. in some way. It's like the colibri, you know. It comes with a long, long peak mm -hmm. and it touches down into the heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we hope to to see in the world. Be colibri. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.